Dudes, it's been a while. Let's take some questions. This is great, man. I confused why your setup is for a left-handed person and you're playing mostly right-handed. Even your footwork, ha <laughs> ha. Are you for real left-handed or is the camera reversed or something? Right-handed, left-handed. Hey, hey dude, both. could you possibly I'm post confused. a video are you on playing left-handed? Right 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 you are you right 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 I'm working on it. My dudes, I've owed you this video for a long time. I know you're not here for the cowbell. You're really here to get to the bottom of the most asked question of my lifetime. Am I righty or lefty? And what the bejesus is going on with my hi-hat? But here's a cowbell anyway. So what is open-handed drumming? And how do you right-footedly play a lefty drum set? And while we're at it, which cup holder in the movie theater is mine? Let's find all that out right now in this inaugural episode of Dude, Dude Thoughts. Thoughts. Actually, first, I should make two disclaimers before I ruin your drumming career with bad advice. Number one, if you show this video to a properly trained drummer, there's a strong likelihood he or she will tell you that I'm out of my mind. And they would be correct. Really, if your goal is to successfully play drums in the most formal, traditional, academically correct way, you should shut me off right now and go sign up for the University of Alabama at Birmingham Music School. Wow, I meant for that example to sound more made up. What I mean is that if you're currently making an A in drum school for playing your right hand crossed over your left, history clearly proves you're on the right path, so don't let me slow you down. I really do mean that. Disclaimer number two, I've been playing open-handed my entire professional career, but I'm still very much in the middle of trying to figure this out. So if you can take these thoughts more as travel logs from a journey in progress rather than full-fledged expert wisdom, you'll probably find this whole video less obnoxious. So now, to the two of you left who haven't closed this browser tab, thanks mom and my future self, let us commence Dude Thoughts, five tubular techniques of the open-handed variety edition, dude. <laughs> So to properly unpack this one, let me start by giving you some context for how I ended up here. When I was 13 and had my first drum lesson, I sat down to begin my drumming journey, grabbed the sticks, aimed my left hand for whatever was on the left, and my right hand for whatever was on the right, which just so happened to respectively be the hats and the snare. But right away my guru corrects me and says, No, this hand goes here and this hand goes here. Oh, why can't I just hit the one that's closer with my closer hand? Cause that ain't how Ringo Starr did it, son. It was a comeback I couldn't refute, and the more I studied the greats of the past, the more they all seemed to play with their hands crossed over one another. And so I accepted my fate that if I was going to follow in the footsteps of the Bonham, the Copeland, the Gad, and beyond, I was going to have to hit this thing with my right hand, the one that's farther away. But gradually it occurred to me over the years that of course all the dudes in the old school play this way. If a hat has to be controlled by a pedal directly built into its stand, and you need your dominant foot to control the bass drum, and your dominant hand matches your dominant foot, which is the case for many of us, but you need your dominant hand to keep time, then you're gonna have to suck it up and cross over and go make hit records with the Beatles. But in the 21st century, now that cable hats are widely available and where you put your pedal doesn't have to have any bearing on where to put your hats, is there any reason to cross over yourself anymore? After spending a year of high school calculus musing the subjects, I ultimately decided I'd no longer be bound by tradition for tradition's sake, went out and bought myself a Pearl RH2000 remote hi-hat stand, and thusly uncrossed my arms once and for all. Literally failed calculus though. So here I am 10 years into the tangent. Still don't know jack about calculus, but I got you five tips for getting your open-handed drumming a little more together. Number one, there's a real way to do this and there's a cheat way to do this. If you're not already buried under a 10 year habit of playing crossed and you're interested in playing open, I would sincerely recommend leaving your drums exactly the way they are and simply doing what I wish I'd done when I was 13. Just hit the thing that's closer with your closer hand. Your challenges with this approach will be twofold. For one thing, your left hand may not naturally exude the physical strength and muscle memory that your right would have, but I consider this a 5% difference in difficulty if you're just starting out, not the 200% difference you might feel if you've been hatting with your right your whole life. For another, every time you want to learn what pretty much any other drummer in history is doing on this groove or that groove, you'll have to develop a knack for converting it to the open-handed layout. Don't sweat these two obstacles too much though. Some of my favorite drummers are succeeding with this approach, like Billy Cobham, Sput C. Wright from Snarky Puppy, and uh, that um, oh yeah, Carnival Verse! Number two, if you do have to cheat, get your gear right. This is one of the rare instances in drumming where I'm more than willing to acknowledge good gear is worth the price tag if you want the setup to work right. There are some discount remote hat stands out there, but they're gonna act that way and potentially turn you off from ever giving this approach a real shot. Let's take a walk. A couple of key steps for converting a right-handed kit into a Harry Myrie Faker's open hand kit. Firstly, flip around your drums so they look like they're rigged lefty. Next, you need three unique pieces of gear you may not already have laying around. One, of course, being the famous Pearl RH2000 remote hi-hat stand. 
two being this AX25L clamp to hold up your hats. And the L in this case stands for long, which is definitely gonna make a difference if you want proper clearance from your cymbal stand there. In three, you'll need a double kick pedal rigged lefty, even if you're a single kick player, because from now on, you'll be playing this slave pedal as your primary kicker. I use the Pearl Demon Drive P3002DL. This time the L is for lefty. Fun fact, if you already own a Demon Drive but it's rigged righty, you can convert it to lefty using the included tools. I get a lot of questions on how to actually set this stuff up here, so I'll give you my two cents on that as well. Your kick pedals go down first, right? Self-explanatory, although it'll look a little weird at first because now your weak foot is on the kick and your strong foot is on the slave. And I don't know if it's psychological or purely physical, but you may detect a little difference in feel when you first get into this setup. But just like when you first learn to kick, you'll settle in after a while. Next, throw down your remote hi-hat pedal. You'll notice mine doesn't have any legs, but I've never seen a remote hat pedal that had enough hardware to keep it from giving you the runaround, so for these, I always just reach right for the industrial Velcro. A bonus of no legs, by the way, is you can nuzzle that hat pedal right next to your kick pedal, which makes your switching a little smoother. Now, if you're OCD about keeping the look clean, which I am to a fault, you can loop the excess cable under the snare basket a couple of times and just secure it with some Velcro cable ties. You're definitely gonna have some leftover slack with this model of hat stand, so something to think about. And lastly, clamp your hat holder thingy to whatever cymbal stand you have on that side of the snare. In my case, that happens to be the right-hand craft, but whatever you have nearby on this side will be fine. A memory lock is definitely gonna be a plus here, because when you get these clamps involved, they can swivel around in action, and you definitely don't want the runaround from your hats. But yeah, other than those three major pieces, you probably have everything you need. Number three, ease into it. In my experience, if you jump all the way into the deep end on the new setup without leaving yourself any nuggets from the old setup, you're just giving yourself a higher barrier to entry and therefore a higher risk of rage quitting, which I've definitely done several times. See, whenever I do shows with other drummers on the bill and they come up and sit on my kit, they all tend to say the same thing. They lean in real close and they say, Harry. This is not normal and I can't do my go-to right-handed lick and I reject it. This will feel foreign at first, so don't be afraid to take baby steps. Once you flip the kit, add a tom or two on the right. That way if you get stuck in the weeds on a fill and the only way out is by toming on your right, you've got something to save you. I was still doing that a few years ago when I put out my first video on this channel. In my experience, eventually you'll prefer the lefty toms. I don't even bring this guy on the road anymore, I just bring these two. Bonus tip, if you want an even tinier baby step for starters, try adding a tom to the left of your righty kit. Number four, adapt your playing as ergonomically as you can to the new layout. I'll give you a few ideas to get you started. First of all, with all your timey stuff on the right and all your toys on the left, in the scenario of an eighth note driven groove, you can keep your right hand locked into the eighth note grid while your left hand plays on or off of that grid. You do that anyway with ghost notes on the snare drum, but now you can move it around to other voices. Check it out. While we're on the subject, I want to give a special shout out to the most asked question about this setup as it relates to fills, and that is, dude, but what about the classic <laughs> fill? First of all, just do that if you have to. But secondly, who likes that fill anyway? Part of the beauty of this setup is it naturally takes you away from that tired textbook stuff you hear all the time. But yeah, for those asking if I lead with my right or my left, I still always lead with my right, but even so, you still don't risk getting in your own way unless we're talking about the really fast strokes. And even then, you can work that stuff out in the shed. One last voicing choice I'll throw on your radar from this setup is the fact that now your ride and your hats are right next to each other, which gives you access to some cool new sounds just from playing them off one another. Check it.
Number five, do not throw away your traditional hi-hat stand. See, even if you become the zen master of this bush league open-handed style, you can never fully marry the setup as a working drummer just due to fly dates where you might be playing backline, or local gigs on house kits, or bills where you're sharing drums with weird dudes who for some reason don't play this completely unconventional and expensive setup. So with your old hat stand in the closet keeping you in touch with your classic side, Nothing left to do but swing for the fences on this open hand thing, my dudes. And hopefully that answers your questions about my whack setup once and for all. With that out of the way, I'll soon be moving on to the second most popular comment, which is, Dude, will you play that song? And the answer is yes, but at this point I have so many requests stacked up that I think I'm just going to lump them all into one near future mega groove video. So if you've been holding out on what you want to hear, now's the time to leave a comment. Give me the name and section of the song, if you will. Till then, dudes, go forth and rock open handed. Hey, hey.